What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade here in the month of October in 2019. And you guys saw in the title, we're also going to be talking about Tesla today very briefly and discussing why. Tesla stock might be in trouble at least in the short term if they do this and by this you're going to have to find out what this is here in a couple of minutes so if you guys enjoyed this video if you guys find value in this video at any moment in time in this video feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing to the channel if you do want to see further content involving the stock market investing and trading and join our strive smart discord group chat and the strive smart Facebook group all of those are are linked down below. So let's get into it, guys. Starting off with the SPX here, the S&P 500, with about 45 minutes left in the trading day today, and I am recording this a bit early today, earlier than I typically do because I am busy here in a couple uh, about 30-45 minutes so I did want to get this video up for you guys, but nonetheless with 45 minutes left in the day today the s and is actually doing quite well. It's up $16 up 0.57% and if you guys were watching the markets the past two days it was abysmal, right? Terrible terrible red in these markets. If we look on the 5 day 5 minute, you know the markets drop from from 2992 in terms of the SPX down to about 2855 which was the low of the day so absolutely crazy about a 140 point difference in about three days from the top to the bottom so the fact that we are seeing a bit of a kind of a breather at this point the markets are coming back up a little bit from that oversold status it's not really surprising me right and if we go back to that 184 hour we can see some critical levels one in particular that we talked about in yesterday's video that the S&P seems to be holding above right now and that level is at 2880 right 2880 this is a support level due to it being a support level back in the month of June June, and it was also a resistance back in the middle of May, right? And whenever we break above a resistance, we all know this at this point, or most of us rather, when we break above a resistance, it becomes a support. So the fact that we're trending above it now makes it a support. So overall on the four hour chart, we can clearly see we're trending between 2880, like I said, and around 2950. That's the general area right now. I guess you can probably draw another level right Right here, if we are looking at the nitty gritty of the chart, I guess you can say we're trending between that 2880 level and maybe 2920 as well. So, roughly in a 40 point window right now is what the SP is trading in. And just because we're having a bit of a breather today, guys, this does not mean that the market is going to reverse, it's going to rally. If you guys saw my video a couple of days ago, weeks ago, whatever it was, when I called out this head and shoulders pattern that's slowly forming, I said that we're not just going to blow through all the support levels and then end up at 2700, right? We're going to blow through a support and then we're going to see a bit of a breather. Some bulls come in to bring that RSI back up and then ultimately we could potentially continue to dump, right? And that's what we're seeing now. We blew through one support at 2950. We blew through another one at 2920. We temporarily blew through this one this morning, but ultimately now we're seeing this breather. So what am I going to be watching, right? I'm going to be watching to see, are we going to get rejected maybe tomorrow, later today? Probably not because the day's already pretty much over. Tomorrow, are we going to maybe rally up a little bit more than ultimately get rejected and then try to go back down to test 2880, maybe 2850? I think that's very, very possible because again, this is simply a breather to bring the RSI up a bit because we were getting extremely, extremely oversold, right? And if we go to the 20-day, one hour, we're clearly still downtrending. We're seeing a bearish cross, which is the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. This could signal more red to come, right? We're seeing the big dump, which was the past two days. We obviously saw that. And you can see that we, we are getting a strong support at that 2880 level, like I said. But we are starting to make... <clears throat> 
<clears throat> excuse me, a downwards push right now with these red candlesticks starting to form here um, towards the end of the day, right? You can see we dumped aggressively this morning <clears throat> down to about 28.55. We popped up to 2,900. We rallied up a bit to 29.10. And now if we end up closing the day something like this, you know, in this kind of direction, that's going to be telling me that we are seeing a dump down below these moving averages on the five day five minute thus really signaling the continuation of the downtrend because this overall on the five day five minute would technically be a lower high from the previous right if we do end up dumping here and closing on a uh, little downswing right and if we go to the Dow Jones industrial average very quickly guys we can see it's up 61 points right now up 0.24 percent very strong support at around 25.9 to around $26,000 resistance at around 26,000 200 putting us in around a 200 to a 300 point window right now on the Dow right and very similar stuff to the S&P we got very oversold now we're just seeing a bit of a breather the bulls are coming in and ultimately I'm going to see are we going to get rejected by 26.2 maybe start to dump again to really complete that right shoulder are we going to rally up a bit even more maybe back up to 26.6 I'm just waiting to see what ends up happening here um over the next couple of days and of course watching the futures pre-market watching large caps how they're reacting in the mornings this can signal to you at least what's going to happen maybe in the morning of the day right how is the markets going to open which way could they potentially start to trend based off of what the futures and large caps are telling you that's kind of what I look at in the morning right and if we zoom in a bit 20 day one hour you can see seems like we're already getting rejected at 26200 here and it seems like the red candlesticks are forming to potentially push us down right if we look at the five day five minute you can see we're still trending under that 180 SMA ultimately seeing a very strong resistance there so if we do close on a little downswing here this could be very negative in terms of the bull side here on the market especially on the Dow and this could bring in the bears tomorrow and ultimately push us down even further to maybe even retest the level that we got to today in the morning at around 25,745, um, right? And if we see the one day, one minute on the Dow, you can see we are plateauing a bit here. It's a double top, right? We're dumping below moving averages. This could definitely close in a downswing here, in my opinion. If we pull up the NASDAQ, very strong day today out of the NASDAQ, extremely strong compared to the S&P and the Dow. This one's up 1.2 percent up nearly 90 points here on the day if we zoom out a bit to the 184 hour it's holding this level at around 75 75 to around 7600 as a support and it seems like it's starting to fill the gap up to 7700 and you guys can see this trend line well multiple trend lines that I drew I think this was yesterday or the day before signaling or kind of showing what could potentially happen in the formation of of this right shoulder and it seems like it's going exactly towards plan right I literally showed you guys here based on these trend lines that we could pull down retest 76 which we did here right consolidate a bit and then slowly rally up which it seems like we're doing right and then ultimately we may get rejected again at 7700 maybe a bit higher here 7750 7760 to then continue the downtrend retest 7580 7600 and if we break that we would ultimately at that point complete this right shoulder um, not really complete it fully but really just continue it based off of what I do have drawn here in these trend lines. So I encourage you guys, if you're doing analysis on the overall markets, draw trend lines out, draw supports, draw resistances, you know, play with these, you know, draw hypothetical scenarios out. This will allow you to really understand what you're doing and whether or not your analysis is good or whether or not your analysis is poor, right? The fact that I drew this out like two, three days ago shows that my analysis shows me at least that my analysis is, is pretty decent, right? It's pretty decent. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm getting this right at this point. Um, you know, if things do play out, you know, the way this is, and it seems like they are as of right now, right? And if we go to the 20 day, one hour, it seems like we are getting rejected by that 50 SMA. There 
is a chance we might fill up again like I said a minute ago we might fill up here tomorrow and ultimately get rejected by that 180 SMA if this does happen again we may be dumping from there completing that right shoulder so ultimately guys that's what the markets are looking like right now I'm not too surprised that we saw a green day remember every time that the markets get squashed there's going to come a point where they end up rallying back a little bit at least, right? Because there's not a point in time when the markets are going to be red every single day forever, right? There's a point where the markets are going to bottom out and recover at least in the short term. And that is what we're seeing right now. To, to no surprise in my opinion and I do think I did mention this I did mention this in yesterday's video I believe that the markets could potentially see a little bit of a breather a little bit of a rally before continuing the drop so let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts on this market right now I'd love to know what you guys have to think and let's talk about what I did today in terms of my trading I took a little bit of a red on TVIX this morning um, if we go to the SPX very quickly in under 30 seconds guys what I pretty much did is I'm watching this um, uh, when I'm trading TVIX I'm watching typically the S&P and um, the, the moving averages on the S&P right so we got this big dump here which would have been a great time to trade TVIX which goes up whenever the S&P is going down and whenever the VIX is going up this would have been a great time right but me I didn't get in on TVIX on this drop I tried to get in here I ended up getting in here and then ultimately I got faked out because we can see here we started to dump I actually didn't get into TVIX at the peak here I ended up getting in here as it started to get rejected and at this point in time I thought SPX was going to push down and uh, really try and test that 2855 level again right I thought we might be dumping here but then ultimately the price action changed on me right we made a higher low and then popped out right we got the pop above the 180 SMA thus dragging TVIX down and thus having me lose money right you know I would have made money if I played it here which would have been fantastic but ultimately I think it was right around here I got in got faked out we dumped and then it hit my 1.2 or 1. Point, I think it was like a 1% stop loss or something like that ended up stopping out on TVIX there but Roku is one that I ended up nailing after that TVIX loss and this is actually one that I called out believe it or not yesterday if you guys watched my video we talked about this in yesterday's video and by the way guys subscribe if you guys do have not done that yet and if you guys do want to see you know yeah, these stock call outs in the videos right because a lot of the time not always I'm not right 100% of the time nobody is let's be honest now but sometimes a lot of the time not a lot of the time but let's just say Sometimes I do nail these predictions, right? As do a lot of people in our group and our community and a lot of people out there, right? And this one ended up playing out beautifully, right? We talked about how $100 is a support level on Roku. We were holding that one nicely and we drew out some other levels of, of resistance and 108 was one of those levels that we peaked at on the 20th of June, right? So the fact that we were holding 100 gave me the um, understanding that, we have a margin from 100 to 108 on Roku. And what is it priced at right now, guys? 108, meaning that it filled that gap beautifully, just like I said and uh, really called out in yesterday's video. And if we go to the one day, one minute, it's very nice here. This chart is looking very, very nice, right? We got the dip to 100. Ultimately, we retested that level of support from yesterday. We popped. I took my little loss on TVIX right around here. And then I saw Roku as the markets were turning green. I saw Roku... It was filling that gap and ultimately breaking resistance levels from once the market opened and the level from yesterday, if you guys noticed that, right? That's at about $105. And then once that started happening, I was scaling into this position. Um, I believe I scaled in a little bit here at 106 or rather 105.60. We pulled down a bit, held the 50 SMA, strong support here, um, you know, ended up putting more at around 105.70, I believe. And then ultimately I swung... Uh, uh, not swung, swing traded, even though it's not a swing trade technically because I, I bought and sold in the same day, but I swing traded it across the day if that's not already a term. If it's not, 
We'll make it a term here on the channel. We swing trade throughout the day here, guys. So I swing traded it throughout the day. Ended up selling at about, I think, like at the peak at 107.56 as we broke the previous peak, rather. And that point, at that point, that gave me... At my average, I believe it was like 105.75, something like that at the peak. Ended up pretty much recouping that loss from TVIX and some making about 1.5% on this Roku trade. So that's what I ended up doing today, guys. Um, again, let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts on that and what did you guys do today. And let's just hop right into Tesla here, guys. So we got some interesting news from Tesla. Well, first of all, we got an email leak a couple of days ago last week, <coughs> excuse me, last week we got an email leak at some point that Tesla quarter three delivery numbers were going to be possibly 100,000. And the fact that they came in at 97,000 and that was actually short of the analysts' expectations of around 97,477 for the quarter. This is what ended up dropping Tesla stock. I believe this was yesterday. Was it yesterday? If we pull the chart, it was either yesterday or the day before. Yep, it was probably yesterday as we do see this big dump here. Um, either way, it happened, right? The, 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 the numbers were a bit short from what analysts expected, and the stock ended up dropping 5%. Percent, And you guys saw in the video, or the title of the video, you know, Tesla might be in trouble if this does not happen. And this, what I'm talking about is the fact that, and by the way, I'm looking at my phone right now, at some notes, the fact that Elon Musk has projected 360 to 400,000 vehicles to be delivered in 2019, right? And Elon Musk, we know that he highballs his estimates sometimes, right? He's very ambitious. He's very out there, and that's good in my opinion, right? That's good. It, it builds drive in the company, whatever it may be, right? But the fact that he set this number, it's kind of putting Tesla in a, in a situation where if they don't hit this last quarter's number, which is around $105,000, uh, not $105,000, 105000 deliveries in order to hit this total number that he set for the year of 2019, you know, this could be very detrimental for the stock, right? If he doesn't end up getting... This 360 to 400,000 deliveries for 2019, right? I think that this can definitely end up being a short seller's dream. We could potentially break the support of this wedge that I am seeing, that we are seeing here together on my screen on Tesla. It's clear that it's making higher lows at the same time that it's making lower highs, thus putting us in this wedge. Another thing that's kind of interesting that I've written here in my notes about Tesla is as you know as as supporters are viewing tesla as a growth stock right analysts on average expect the company to report a seven percent drop in revenue and a non-gap loss of 82 million dollars for the september quarter according to refinitiv data full year revenue is seen increasing 15 percent far less than Tesla's revenue growth of over 80% in 2018. So if I'm reading this correctly, the growth from 2017 to 2018 was 80% in revenue, but from 2018 to 2019, it's 15%. And I'm not 100% sure if I'm understanding that correctly, but if that is correct, guys, you know, this revenue growth is slowing down, no doubt about it. But then you have a lot of news and a lot of... Um really positive things going for the company with the China Gigafactory that could ultimately bring those production numbers a lot higher than the 95, 100,000, um, 105,000 per quarter that they're looking to do right now. So these are just some things that are interesting. And I honestly believe if next quarter that if, if they don't get this full year number of 360 to 400, whatever that number is, 400,000 deliveries, you know, if they miss the 105,000 deliveries for for this final quarter, that's going to be a huge, huge blow for the stock. I honestly think that it's going to be taking it negatively at that point, and I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that. But ultimately now, guys, here in the short term, before we even get what the delivery numbers are going to be, I'm watching Tesla to see what it's going to do, right? This is one of my top stocks on my watch list. It always is because it's always moving up aggressively, down aggressively. It's always one worth 
worth watching. And again, we're in this wedge where we're either going to break out or break down, which could be a put option play if we break down. It could be a short seller's dream if we break down because that could be a lot of downside at that point. Or if we pop the resistance here, not only are we breaking the wedge, we're also breaking this old resistance at around 240, 245, which is very prominent. And that could be a person's dream that loves going long, right? This, this, this is going to be nice, you know, if we do end up breaking for the long people out there. But again, the delivery numbers, that could end up squashing you as well if they're negative. But on the flip side, let's say they blow delivery numbers out the water. Let's say they report 120,000 deliveries for the next quarter, this stock could definitely be back up into the high 200s, low 300s, in my opinion, if we do get some crazy, crazy out of the water numbers here with Tesla. So that's my thoughts on Tesla. Honestly, that's my breakdown on Tesla in general. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about that? And let's talk about a couple of stocks very quickly that I'm watching here. One being PG, this was actually called out in our Discord group chat yesterday, and by the way, that is linked down below. Get in there. We have over 800 people in that Discord group chat active the entire day. We're talking all day, guys. Trust me, you do not want to miss being there. But anyway, Procter & Gamble, PG, is looking quite good right now, right? We've pulled down from 125 down to about 120, 121 as of right now that I'm recording this video, and ultimately, this stock, guys... His old, it's holding the 180 SMA here on the 4-hour chart. Every time it's pulled down in the past, it's bounced to a higher high based on the 6-month chart. So just on that case alone, this one's worth watching, right? Because it is known to recover. It is known as one of those safe haven value stocks, although no stocks out there are 100% safe, right? Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, these value plays out there, they're as safe as they come, right? As PG, or rather as the markets get very volatile, they take money away from these growth stocks, or rather when the markets are getting very, very, you know, shaky, people take money from growth stocks a lot of the time, riskier growth stocks, and then funnel them into PG, the value stocks that we just talked about, like Johnson & Johnson, PG, Coca-Cola. And if you look at the prices of these McDonald's, right, take a look at the prices, guys. McDonald's, it's very high in price based, you know, compared to a lot of these growth stocks that have gotten hammered, right? We have Coca-Cola high in price. J&J, &J, this has had some legal action, so it's a little bit lower. But either way, it's holding up nicely as these markets have been getting crushed, right? What's the the other one um you know pepsi let's take a look at pepsi this one's very high in price right it's actually up 3.2 percent today you can see these are the safe haven stocks so with pg being on a dip at this point i think it's worth watching right pg for sure disney this one's worth watching. It seems like it is looking to drop here to the 120s. The fact that it's still at 128, we still have a bit to go here. But like I mentioned in a couple of videos ago, in the anticipation of this release of the Disney Plus platform, their streaming service, it seems like the hype is dying down right now. The stock is selling off. And I do see a major support being at 119, 120, right around here, which if we zoom out a bit to the one year, one day, you guys can see that was an old resistance kind of the sticking point until we got that news that pumped up Disney stock to the next level and obviously now that we're pulling down from this high at 150 that is a spot that we could be going down to with this head and shoulders pattern um excuse me in full effect right now so Disney watching that one very very closely Roku again we talked about this one I'm obviously watching that as it continues to run up here as it continues to show signs of that reversal uptrend right next level would be 110 112 and then ultimately guys if we break that that's going to be uh, be putting us above that 180 SMA which is a very attractive level for Roku that could be putting us in a point where it could potentially break out so not too many stuff Stocks and ETFs that I'm watching, guys. Honestly, PG, Roku, Chipotle is one that I'm watching, but Chipotle overall does seem like it has a bit more downside here due to this triple top, and it seems like it is showing lower highs here, so we could be seeing a sell-off. But other than those stocks, obviously, I'm watching the market ETFs, TVIX, 
SQQQ, those are my go-tos when the markets are red. You guys actually had a pretty solid day-to-day, -day, very solid comeback day, up $1.50, up 11%. Natural gas is showing some signs of life to the upside here. It seems like we held 220, 225-ish. We're breaking back above 230. Maybe we fill the gap to 240 now. That's kind of what I'm watching, and if that happens, you guys could be a very good play for tomorrow and for next week. So those are some things that I'm watching and going through my mind um, and about the markets, about Tesla, and about all those other stocks that we talked about. So if you guys found value in this video, if you did find any enjoyment whatsoever, feel free to go hit that like button. Feel free to hit that subscribe button and join our Discord group chat, Facebook group. Follow me on Instagram, guys. I'm trying to build up my Instagram. Get on there. Follow me. I'm posting a lot throughout the day on stories, watch lists, what I'm doing, trades, my personal life. If you guys want to know more about me, that's the place to go. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.